Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a brand new vlog. It is currently Monday morning and we are... <laughs> Gosh, I was actually about to go in straight away with a weather update and then I realised that would make me the most boring person in the entire world. It's Monday morning and um, today I just want to be quite productive. I've got quite a bit of tidying to do. I'm trying to block all the um, mess behind me with my body. Got a bit of tidying to do, got quite a lot of admin to do. I can't help but talk about the weather because it really does define what I do in a day and my week. It's okay now, but we are due to have pretty much four solid days of rain for the next few days. So I am gonna go and bring lots of blooms in from the garden and also do a big old harvest. Call me Farmer Josie if you like. <laughs> I'm gonna do a big old harvest. Um, I actually pulled up some carrots this morning. I'm gonna pull up loads of pull up, snip, prune, harvest some broad beans. I went down a bit of a broad bean YouTube wormhole yesterday. <laughs> Gosh, what has my life become? Um, and I found some river cottage recipes, so I'm gonna make myself a broad bean on toast recipe. One of our friends that came over yesterday very kindly bought some homemade bread, so I'm going to have homemade broad bean mash kind of thing on homemade bread for my luncheon, which I can't wait for. And yeah, basically just prepare the garden for a few days of rain because then it's gonna be hopefully a heat wave, which I'm very excited for. I finally, received an under the stories order this morning i say finally i swear i ordered it about 10 days ago and i feel like it's about time companies stopped blaming delays and bad service on brexit and on covid because we've had to deal with those things for so long but never mind the piece has arrived and i'm really in love with this dress so this is the first thing that was in my order it's just a really plain comfortable easy to wear easy to throw on i don't know if you'd call it a jumper dress it's like a jersey dress it is like a gray mull kind of material like a sweatshirt kind of material I like the length of the sleeves because then your hands are free, you're not gonna get your sleeves stuck in anything. Quite a nice length. Yeah, just really good for wearing on days like today when it is technically a summer's day, we do have a little bit of sunshine coming through, but you don't necessarily want to be prancing around in a strappy dress and it's nice and comfortable. So this is my outfit of the day. I might just quickly pop on the other dress that I got in my order as well to show you. So, Oh, was that a jazzy transition or was that a jazzy transition? Uh, so this is the second dress. These are the only two things that were in my order. I don't think I've ever placed such a small and other stories order before, but I feel like I don't even need to explain why I bought this. It's just so many things that I love. Really easy to wear, simple summer dress. I do just love a smocked bodice it's so comfortable to wear it's got a lovely quite an antique floral pattern these are um i've been wearing these a lot as like house shoes nipping into the garden shoes they're actually from havana's same as the flip-flop brand and yeah you've got a nice square neckline a slight puffy sleeve i'm not doing anything other than just bits and bobs in the house today so just got my hair scraped back and natural makeup on my eyebrows I'm not gonna give you a close up, they are not looking too good. My skin just rejects anything like this. Goodness knows what would happen if I ever got an actual tattoo. It would probably end up like the caterpillar on, um, what's the name, Rebel Wilson's back. <laughs> Is it in Bridesmaids? <laughs> Is it Bridesmaids? <laughs> I'm sure you know the scene that I am referring to. Um, but yeah, the eyebrows have basically just gone a little bit scabby and they look a bit disgusting. My skin is essentially saying no thank you to all of the stuff that is on them. But if I was to go like this, the first part of my brow, the I think it's called the bulb, I can actually see where it started to heal and um, you can actually see the strokes of the microblading. So I feel positive that it is gonna turn out looking good. Today is day 10, so technically the day that I'm allowed to start like properly cleaning my face with water. But I think I'm gonna give it a couple more days because I think I'm a bit behind. I'm a bit slow on the old healing process. Um, but hopefully by the end of the week, by the time we have our lovely heat wave, hopefully they'll have recovered. I do have a facial in London tomorrow as well, which I'm really looking forward to, but I am gonna have to ask them to just completely avoid the brow area. That is as close as I'm gonna get you to my eyebrows, um, and you can't even really see because of my speckled mirror. You can probably tell they're just looking a little bit angry up here. 
Anyway, enough about the brows, let's go and get some broad beans and make some lunch. Okay, so I'm just about to go down into the garden to collect my broad beans, but I have something very exciting to show you beforehand. This scene here is very pleasing to me, <laughs> colour-wise. The sage green and the kind of cloud-coloured always pan. So I first introduced you to this epic pan a couple of vlogs ago. I have been trialling out this one over here in the lovely pink colour. Um, and today, I'm very pleased to be working with Always Pan and I'm going to let you know a little bit more about them, why everyone is going absolutely crazy for these pans, why they have sold out so many times over in the States. They are literally the pan that everyone is talking about on Instagram. And as we know, I do tend to get very excited about pans because that is my life these days. So the company that makes these is called Our Place and they are now available in the UK. I'll flip you around to talk to you. And the funny thing is when Charlie and I first moved here, Charlie really wanted to get one of these pans um, to have here in the house because obviously that was when we were really buying like all of our crockery and they were only available in the US but back a year ago our friends Rory and Nathan still lived in New York and we actually looked at getting one sent to them for them to bring them back to us that is how much we wanted one of those one of these pans last year logistically sadly it didn't work out so I am so thrilled as is Charlie that they're now available here in the UK I'm sorry I'm so shiny I'm still having to put lots of coconut oil on the brows and it is yeah the brows are another story so we finally are able to get our hands on things from our place and in particular the always pan so I have got not one not two <laughs> but three which I know is very very greedy of me. I haven't actually decided which one we're going to keep here in the house um, but obviously the other two will go over to the cottage, maybe one to the cottage and to my mum. <laughs> I think they are firstly absolutely beautiful. I, I can't actually decide which one is my favourite. I'm leaning towards this greeny one. So obviously I have been using the pink one um, but I thought I would show you literally how they come. So a few things that make these extra special and not just like a normal pan. Firstly, looking at it, you might think it is like cast iron and therefore going to be really, really heavy. But actually, it is incredibly lightweight. So if you are picking it up with one hand to do your straining or whatever, it's really not going to require too much bicep action. You can get quite a lot of stackable things and I've seen, I actually follow the founder on Instagram and she's got, I think they're called like dumpling, the wooden, I think they're, du they're dumpling trays, I'm not sure the technical term. You can stack them up and steam loads of th things in there. But it actually comes with, I don't know what you'd call this, simmering dish. Uh, which you can use obviously to strain things, you can pop a little bit of water at the bottom and allow the steam to cook things, which is how I like to do my beans and peas. If you've got bok choy, uh, spinach, great for that, and then you can obviously use it as a little strainer. What does this say? The always pan is designed to help you do more with less, so get ready to steam, saute, braise, fry, stew, boil, sear, serve, store, and more. They've tried really hard to minimise um, non-recyclable packaging. Most of the packaging is recyclable. They're a very conscious company in that respect. They're also very conscious of ensuring that their workers get paid a fair wage. It's one of those brands that's doing everything they can sustainability and ethically wise, which is another reason why I love them. Um, but the main thing for me, practicality wise, is this area here. So this is obviously where you do your cooking. I've seen people doing fried eggs. I'm going to do a fried egg in a second, so we'll test it out for ourselves. This is ultra non-stick, but the thing with a lot of non-stick pans is that the actual non-stick coating can be quite toxic, which is obviously not what you want <laughs> when you're cooking with something. Um, but this has been specially designed by our place to be non-toxic and yet ultra super duper non-stick. Something else I found really useful when cooking with my pink one is that it has this little spatula rest which is great for when you're cooking you can just do your stirring whack your spatula there you don't need to worry about getting sauce on your worktops this handle here does not get hot so you can just grab it midway through your cooking to do your straining which is very very handy and it's the same color so it's just a very ergonomical nice design this one does get hot so don't go grabbing this one but because the pan is not too heavy you don't really need two hands you can literally just lift, lift it up and do whatever you need to do so there's loads of different things you can obviously cook in this. I think it said that you can, this replaces eight 
pans or this does eight things in one so throughout the vlog i'm going to show you a few different recipes one that i'm doing for lunch is going to be like the level one um but i have done some really nice noodles rice dishes i think tonight we're going to do a curry in here which would be really nice like a lentil dal there's so many things you can do with it so this is I would say the hero products. I do have a 10% off code, which I will leave on the screen. Um, and I'll leave these linked down below. This is the hero product, which Charlie and I are in love with. Definitely worth the wait, but they do also do crockery, um, bowls, plates that I'll be serving my food on in a second. They do knife boards. We've been using this for cutting pizzas and cutting up veggies and things like that and they do a selection of knives as well and everything comes in a really lovely selection of colours. I'm not going to try and do these all one-handed but they've got a very practical kind of veggie cutting knife, a larger knife for larger things, onions etc, bread knife. One thing you need to be careful of by the way when you're washing these is not to use anything metal like no metal scouring pads because that could obviously dislodge and no metal utensils because you don't want to scratch the non-stick of this. So this is a natural cleaning sponge. It's one of those where when you add water it kind of inflates a little bit and it's nice and soft. Perfect for cooking things like this. Cooking? Cleaning? But I also just use my normal um, bristle brush as well. So this is the steam colour. Absolutely beautiful. But I have to say I thought this would be my favourite, but I'm just in love with that green one. It's such a lovely shade of green. It almost perfectly matches our Dalesford um, <laughs> hand soap as well. And what else do I have to show you? Even with the lid on, this is still very lightweight, so you can see the colour in a slightly better daylight here. But anyway, that's a little intro to the brand. I can't quite believe my luck that I get to work with them after we lusted over these so, so much, but it just didn't work out logistically. But now they're here in the UK, which is very exciting. I know that a lot of you are in the US, so I'm sure many of you already have one. So let me know um, any secret recipes or tips down below. But now I'm going to go and grab my beans and do some cooking. It feels like it's almost happened overnight, but all of my beans seem to be ready. There's still some slightly younger ones, um, but I think I'm going to have to come down this afternoon before the rain and pick loads and potentially freeze some. So I've just grabbed a massive handful, make some beans on toast for Charlie as well, and a big chunk of lettuce. Our lovely gardener, Jack, who lives in the village, has bought us some of her hen eggs. Obviously these boxes are <laughs> recycled from the supermarket, but she's got over a hundred hens, so loads and loads of eggs. So I will fry up one of those, put the rest in the fridge, and that is our local wholesome lunch. Do you know I'm looking and I can't help but smile Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on I put my feet up and we just sing along And I can't help but feeling just loving have my finished luncheon. We have got broad beans on toast with a fried egg and it looks and smells absolutely delicious. So before it gets cold, I'm going to tuck in. Well, it is safe to say I will not be buying <laughs> any broad beans ever again. I cannot believe quite how productive our broad bean plants have been. So for the next probably few hours, I'm <laughs> not going to lie, I'm going to be depodding these and preparing them to be frozen and we will have bags and bags of broad beans that I can put in recipes and to be honest this will keep us going until Christmas, look at Dickens enjoying the fresh air, yeah I think this will definitely <laughs> keep us going until Christmas, this is not even all of them, this is just, these are just the ones which are so big that they're really weighing down the plants, yes, <laughs> that's my next task, we've also got some lovely 
sage leaves and some exceptionally gnarly and twisted carrots. They'll taste absolutely fine. They look a little bit crazy, but this is what happens when they hit a stone in the soil, for example, and my soil is quite stony, and then they just shoot out and do crazy things. And then here is the chive, and I'm gonna follow Sarah Raven, um, her YouTube video on courgettes, and make a chive tea, which will be useful for pouring onto the courgettes, and hopefully stopping them from growing any fungal diseases. Well, it took almost an hour, but we have podded or depodded? I'm not sure. Probably depodded. Um, probably, gosh, you could play that fairground game, couldn't you? How many, how many beans in the bowl? My guess is about, I don't know, 300 in here? I'm not sure. I'm not very good at guessing games. Um, but now I have to boil these and then dry them. I have to boil them, put them in ice cold water, then dry them and then freeze them on a flat tray so they don't all get like clunked together. And then after they've frozen on a flat tray separately overnight, add them into some stasher bags and they're good to go. I'm not actually too sure why you have to boil them at this stage. Maybe it's a hygiene thing, not too sure. But yes, whatever we have for dinner, I will have with some of our lovely carrots. And I'm just going to take these over to Mother Deer. And then go and see if there's anything else I can harvest. I'm having one of those days where I'm doing quite a lot of Instagram stories today. Just, you know, same as this vlog, like garden updates, that kind of stuff. But because I'm doing Instagram stories, I keep forgetting what I've told or shown you on the vlogs and what I've shown on my Instagram stories. So I'm sorry if things have been a little bit um, higgledy-piggledy. But to update you, I have now picked all the broad beans. Um, I have boiled them and then put them in a bowl of iced water to stop them cooking. And I now have a tray, a baking tray of broad beans lying flat in the freezer, which I'll have like that for an hour. And then I will put them in a stasher bag. That is the process that I'm doing. As you might be able to tell by my change of outfit, I'm gonna do a 30 minute peloton. I just didn't really have time this morning. By the time I had a bit of a lion, we had friends over last night watching the football. Uh, Charlie and I probably went to bed at about midnight, so I had a bit of a lion for a Monday. So by the time I was up and ready, I just didn't have time to spin. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm just wearing an, a, quite an old set from Sweaty Betty. Their sports bras really are the best though. I like their quite long ones because it's a sports bra and a top in one. So on a day like today, I just don't need to pop anything else on with it. Yeah. That's an update, I'm gonna do my spin and then it's time to have a shower and make some dinner. Okay, workout done, I'm still a little bit out of breath, but I've come down here to show you a bit of an update. You may be thinking, gosh, where has all of your spinach gone? <laughs> well, as you probably saw earlier, it was getting rather out of hand. Um, it was creating a lot of shade on the rest of the bed, which was to the detriment of some of the plants. So we had our gardener Jack here today and I gave her carte blanche is that the expression i basically said please do what you think is needed to tidy things up get it looking good again um and hopefully this will allow more light to get to the base of the plants which means we'll get some nice young fresh leaves as opposed to all those big ones which actually were starting to get a little bit bitter you can see a little bit more clearly now i've got a couple of kales growing in here and i think i might put something else down here. I don't know if I'll do two sets of spinach next year, already thinking ahead, because those four plants, you can see really clearly now where it was one, two, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, gosh, I had lots of spinach. I didn't realize. I thought I'd only bought a tray of six. Anyway, I have bought down, not that this area really needs it, but I saw this in the shed and I thought I might as well pop some on. It's the miracle Grow fruit and vegetable food. So we shall see. Um, not that this area needs it at all. I might pop some around my kale. This one I planted, was it yesterday or the day before? Um, this one did get attacked by butterflies, so that's why I've popped the cage on. And then I'm growing a couple underneath my cloche lid there. 
and a couple inside this cloche. So hopefully we'll have some nice big curly kale for autumn winter. But yeah, it is due to rain tonight and tomorrow. So I thought that'd be a good time to put some plant food on. I have been using mostly a brand called Envy which is really good and it's quite like a clean formula. I I've never used anything from miracle Grow before, but it does say suitable for organic farming. So I'm sure there's nothing nasty in here. Um, and yeah, over the next few days, hopefully it will water itself in and give my plants some love. Oh, we've also done, I'm gonna grab this. I think this is a butternut squash. It's getting very dry, just living in this pot. So Jack has cleared some of the chives from this bed and I'm going to plant that there. These I reckon could get pretty big, they're already really spreading out. It looks like Jack's cleared some leaves as well to give it a little bit more light down there, but I think that is, they do say with butternut squash, because I don't actually know if it's a squash or a courgette or a pineapple, no, not pineapple, um, pumpkin. They do say you should really leave about a meter in between because they get so massive and slowly but surely we are taking herbs out of this bed and doing herbs in the troughs. Herbs are really Charlie's domain. I can't get excited about herbs. I just find them quite boring in comparison to veggies, <laughs> even though I do love herbs within cooking. But yeah, I'm gonna plant this this evening. It'll only take me a couple of minutes as I do my watering so that we're ready for the rain ahead of next week's heat wave. I've also just picked another little bunch of flowers, a mixture of cosmos and, um, what are they called? Cornflowers. And I've popped them in an old Dalesford, Dalesford diffuser refill bottle. Um, and I'm gonna take these over to Lilla because we've got a house full of blooms. You might've seen me picking the blooms and they just look spectacular in the last vlog. So yeah, we've got plenty. So I'm gonna take these over to Lilla as well as some carrots. Good morning, my darlings. I wasn't expecting to jump from one to the other quite as much as this. Um, I was hoping to show you a lovely rice dish for dinner yesterday, but uh, we had a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of a drama. I came in after my flower picking, had a quick body shower, and then Charlie ran up to the bathroom clutching his hand, and he basically cut his hand quite badly opening Dexter's. Lily's kitchen dinner, um, his dog food can, which is silly because I had already fed the boys, but when Dexter's hungry, he just stares at you. So Charlie obviously thought that he was asking for more dinner, went to go and feed him um, and cut his hand really quite deep just here. So we uh, dashed off to our nearest hospital to get Charlie to get it looked at. Um, luckily they said that just steri strips would be fine. So that's um, that's Charlie's <laughs> situation right now. So I'm sorry I didn't get to show you any dinner. Sorry, I'm not very good at multitasking, driving and talking. Um, so I'm now at the train station heading into London today. Did another spin this morning. I didn't have time to properly style my hair after showering, so I left the house with it a little bit poofy. But I was, oh, did I forget to charge it? Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> but I was so kindly sent the GHG Unplugged um, a, but a couple of weeks ago now and it's just brilliant because it is so tiny that I just popped, I just saw it on the side and I chucked it in my handbag and I thought if I get to the station with about 10 minutes or so to spare, I can just whiz through my hair. Um, I'm not gonna properly style it or anything. It takes a little bit longer to heat up than your plugged in ones, but then I guess you have to expect a few little differences. There we go, not that long at all. Um, I'm not going to do anything jazzy, I just thought I could use this to smooth out 
any flyaways because the thing is when I drive to the station I never know if I'm gonna get stuck behind a tractor or school bus or just get caught in a load of traffic um, so I always like to give myself plenty of time when driving to the station because you just never know I did blow dry my hair with a paddle brush so it's actually pretty smooth already isn't it funny that it took so long for us to just we were just so used to plug in straighteners and I feel like in the last two years there are so many options now for cordless ones let me know if you'd like me to do a comparison video okay I'm gonna head into the station I'm gonna leave this in the car I've got Love Island downloaded ready to watch on the train which is brilliant let's pop my mask on I'm wearing my lovely out dazzle sleeper dress and I just realized it perfectly matches my mask right let's go with a nice coffee and breakfast at Chiltern Firehouse and then I've spent the last few hours at Harrods. Elemis have just launched an amazing area there so you can go and discover all their skincare. You can have a free consultation. If you remember my last vlog where I came to London I had one at John Lewis where you basically have your face scanned like it takes a couple of pictures of your skin and you can see any wrinkles, any areas of dehydration, any areas of sun damage and then you'll have a consultation with a skincare expert and it is completely free. It is something that I recommend to so many friends and family members if you're not sure if your skin is dehydrated or oily, XYZ, it's such a good educational thing to do. And their area within Harrods is just absolutely beautiful, it's on the ground floor and looking incredibly shiny, my gosh being in the city is not good for my skin. Definitely worth a visit. And then we had a glorious lunch down at Social by Jason Atherton. I did have a macaroni cheese. I was trying to be good ahead of our holiday, but the macaroni cheese just looked and sounded so delicious. And it was. And then I had a little mooch around, saw the most beautiful basket bag from Celine, and then discovered that Loewe and Paula's Ibiza have a pop-up on the, I think it was on the first floor. I've never seen so many basket bags in one place. It was absolutely amazing. Next stop for today is Liberty and I have got a facial with Amora Vixa, which is another lovely, lovely skincare brand. I'm intrigued to see if they're gonna be able to do the full facial because obviously my brows are not fully healed yet. I'll explain that to them and hopefully we can still find a way of having a good treatment because their products are seriously luxurious. Um, we are almost there, so I'll take you inside. Gosh, it is suddenly a rather glorious day. I have not been to Regent Street and I've definitely not been to Liberty since lockdown, I don't think, since yeah, it's probably been a couple of years and they have got the whole of Liberty boarded up but the scaffolding 
actually has a picture of Liberty on it. So from far away, it probably doesn't look any different. I don't know if maybe they're doing a little bit of, um, I'm sure it's probably a listed building, so they're probably doing some very delicate restoration work. I've not been to uh, Topshop since they sold, so I don't even know if the Topshop flagship is still down there or not. But anyway, I've got 15 minutes to mooch around and then head in for my facial. Oh, that is accurate. So all we need is love, summer blooms, and dogs. <laughs> Gorgeous. So this is the lovely treatment room for Amora Vixa here in Liberty. You would not believe that Carnaby Street is just the other side of this curtain. So the facial is um, personalised as per your skin needs. So I've said that I've got a little bit of congestion on the chin. It looks like we're going to be using a huge range of products from all their ranges. This is one of my favourites, the Evening Mist. This is one of the newest products that I've tried from Amora Vixa. Got their Buffin Jelly. Ooh, I haven't actually tried that. Bed looks exceptionally comfortable. So I'm ready to have a sneeze. It's not very often that I get to vlog in Soho with absolutely no one behind me. It is like a ghost town. I have honestly never seen Soho quite this quiet, but I just had <laughs> the best nap that I've ever had in central London. That Amora Vixa facial was so heavenly. I knew it was going to be good because there were just some little signs. For example, the lady that did the treatment for me, she was from Lefkada, which is an island in Greece that many people wouldn't have heard of, but Charlie and I were actually meant to be going on holiday there this year. It didn't happen because of Covid. Um, and also the music that she was playing in the room was Alexis French, which is Charlie's favourite classical musician. And the products that she used, oh my gosh, it was, it was absolutely heavenly. Good morning, my darlings. It's now Wednesday morning. I need to get better at... Um, shortening my vlogs because today is the day before you're gonna see this video and I need to get ahead so I think I'm gonna do a few one day vlogs from now on to try and get myself a little bit ahead again I don't like to cut it too close to the bone I think I stopped talking to you in the middle of the street yesterday because I suddenly got really embarrassed because a family started walking towards me after saying how I was the only one on that street in Soho um, so yeah, pro apologies if yesterday's footage ended very abruptly, but oh my goodness, I was also in a zombie state because that facial from Amora Vixa was so heavenly. It was in a treatment room up on the first floor of Liberty and um, in fact, I'm not even sure if I'll have included the footage that I filmed on the street in Soho, so follow up chat. She had the best massage technique I have ever experienced. I definitely fell asleep many times, especially when she was massaging my cheeks. She avoided the brow area because of the microblading, um, which the scabbing is now all gone. Um, the shape is still there, but it's at that phase now where it looks as though nothing's worked and then apparently by some magic the dye or the colour starts to come back. I don't know how it works, but I hope it does. I've still got signs of microblading here, um, but then over the brow arch and in fact, Sean put a before and after on her Instagram, I'll pop it on the screen here, which is actually amazing. A really good visual of how my brows used to look and how they should hopefully look when the microblading blading process is finished. Because obviously when you've just had them done, that's um, quite a good sign of like how the shape is going to look, etc, etc. Anyway, I didn't want to ramble too much this morning. Facial was incredible, highly recommend. So nice to discover so many of our Amora Vixa products as well. There's definitely loads from that facial that I got to try that I I want to add to my routine. This morning I'm going to really quickly do my makeup with you but just because over the last few days I have received quite a lot of new in beauty bits that I really want to try out and test with you including a few new facial SPFs. Murad have their City Skin Age Defense SPF 50 and Clay Depot have their 
SPF 50 UV protective cream. This is a very luxurious, well they're both very luxurious products, but I do love Clay de Peau skincare, so I thought I would give this one a try with you. My sign of a good facial SPF is one that doesn't make my face go bright white. Um, I've already done serum and moisturizer this morning. Well, that's a good start. It hasn't made my face go white. So I also visited the Elemis counter in Harrods yesterday um, and the little contraption that they have there takes a photo of your skin and then it shows you if you have any areas of sun damage. And strangely, I have sun damage on my cheeks, which is a bit weird. Not so bad on my nose, but then I do often go in with like a double layer of SPF on my nose. Well, that feels really lovely. As you can see, it's quite um, shiny at the moment, but I'm sure if I gave it five minutes, which I normally would do, I would normally leave creams, any kind of cream, five minutes to sink into my skin. So I'm gonna get dressed because I'm worried I'm gonna fl <laughs> flash you in my little nighty. Um, give this a few moments to sink in and then we'll try some new makeup quickly together. Okay, it's only been one minute as opposed to five, but it's sunk in pretty well. I've just popped on this little white dress, which is actually one of my Amazon finds. Um, I'm going to show you, remind you of another of my Amazon dresses in a second, actually, because it's come back in stock, and it's the one that everyone um, was absolutely loving before. In fact, I'll just pop a, a clip on the screen here of the one that I mean, and I'll leave it linked down below, because I know that it was my favourite, or is my favourite, of all the ones that I've got of that particular style from Amazon. Um, and I did promise that I would let you know when it came back in stock. So you'll find both of the Amazon dresses linked down below. Anyway, let's try on some new makeup, and then we are heading to the Cotswold Lavender Fields, which I'm so excited about. I went there last year, and it was so lovely, just a really huge, huge field. Um, I've got this headband on again from Clementine, Clementine, which is it? I think Clementine. Clementine and Mint, which is one of my followers' lovely companies. Um, I wore it all day out yesterday, but I also keep it in my makeup drawer because it's great for pushing my hair back when I'm popping my makeup on. So first thing I'm going to try is a new long wearing and hydrating matte foundation. It's called the Everlasting Foundation from Clarins. I have always loved Clarins foundations. They always work really well on my skin. So let's see how it does over the top of this SPF. And I have got the shade 108 Point 0.5 which is cashew and I'm applying it using my by Terry sponge. Wow a little goes a long way. Okay first impressions are really really good. Do you know what I really need to get a better lighting setup to show you guys makeup routines because I can see in the camera it just doesn't look anywhere near as good as it does in real life. Consistency wise, so I did two and a half pumps on my sponge. This is my By Terry sponge, I love it. By Terry discount code, still live, Josie 20. Competition, ooh, what date is this video going live? Yes, you still have three days to enter the competition to win by Terry Makeup Artist to do your wedding day makeup, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, back to the foundation. Two and a half pumps has done my whole face with a really good amount of coverage. Um, I have got some blemishes on my chin and I obviously have redness around the brows, which I was going to go in and add some coverage with another concealer, but I don't think I need to. Even given the fact that I have put this on over an SPF. It has still gone onto my skin really nicely. It feels and looks really dewy, really comfortable. It doesn't look cakey at all. Um, that colour for me is perfect. So obviously it's called long wearing and hydrating. I can, I can see and I can feel that it's hydrating. We shall see if it is long lasting, everlasting in fact. We'll see as the day goes on. So that is great, a really, really good first impression from um, Clarins. I am going to pop a little bit of my Codate concealer under my eyes because I do have some dark circles today. Didn't drink enough water yesterday. And I'm just going to use some of my fave hyaluronic hydra powder to set down the base because I can tell where it is so moisturising. It would make me end up a little bit shiny. I always like to finish my base with the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. I have started using it with this smaller brush. Um, I don't know if they have, oh yeah, B08, B08 from Spectrum. 
and it's nice because then you can be quite precise with where you apply your powder. I especially get a shiny in between the brows, so it's really good for doing that area. And you can use my 20% off code on this. I have a bronzer here in this beautiful cushioned um, palette from Dior. Let's see how this is. I'm using my By Terry brush. This is a really lovely, quite a natural bronze shade. That is absolutely gorgeous. That's a really nice, everyday, natural... Um, it's literally called Natural Bronze. 04 Tan Bronze is the shade. How gorgeous is that palette? That is such a nice shade. That foundation and bronzer combo is definitely a winner. I met my friend Vicky for drinks after my facial yesterday and Vicky works for Tom Ford and she very kindly bought me some new goodies from Tom Ford to try including the Sheer Cheek Duo in the shade 05 Lisson and it looks absolutely stunning in particular, well both of these shades I think are just absolutely gorgeous. I think I'm going to try the more corally shade today. So beautiful. I like that it's quite delicate, you can really go in and build it up because some, quite a lot of blushes you just go in and straight away your, your cheeks are bright pink whereas this I feel is really buildable so you can get it in the exact areas that you want it. Again, that is a really nice, slightly more natural colouring that is absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous Soleil packaging from Tom Ford. Now, I do love pink on the eyes, so actually I'm going to pop a little bit of this on the eyelid too. I'm actually going to put some of the Dior bronzer on my eyelids as well, just around the crease. And then my usual mascara from Swede. Again, the discount code Josie20 is still active with this. That is honestly the best mascara I have tried in such a long time um, and it has got ingredients in there which nourish your lashes too. So big fan of that one and now I'm very excited to try some new lip products um, because I have quite a few new ones and <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to try all of them at once. I do have some new Tom Ford lip products as well but I feel like I, kn I know what to expect with Tom Ford lip products. Um, but I also have some of the new lip power from Giorgio Armani Beauty and I have three beautiful shades, all of which are so... such pretty pink shades and if you can see, they look a little bit cooler than they are in real life because you are in the kind of grey morning sunlight there. I'm going to start by lining my lips with Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. So the shades I have here are 104, 103, and 503. Um, they are all absolutely gorgeous. I'm quite drawn to 103 today because it's a little bit more peachy and fresh. I do really like the shape of the applicator. It's got a bit of a point in there, which hopefully will give a good application. And these are meant to be really long lasting as well. That colour is absolutely beautiful. That is my perfect colour. Oh my gosh. Okay, new fave, 103 Lip Power from Giorgio Armani. It's a lot more balmy than I was expecting that to be. Um, so I'll be surprised if this is, in fact, long-lasting. So I'm going to take it with me in my handbag. Really excited to try these other colours later in the day or another day. So I'm going to pop those out to the side there. And then what I'm going to put on top, I'm not sure if this is a good idea or not, but I'm really conscious now of protecting my lips, especially now that we've hopefully got a heat wave starting today. And this is the lip balm with SPF 50 plus um, from Bondi Sands. I actually did wear this alone yesterday and it tastes really good. I just kept getting little hints of strawberry. I guess if you are wearing a, a matte lip product or a lipstick, it's fine to put this over the top. At least I hope it is. I'm layering it over the Giorgio Armani um, slightly more balmy product. It doesn't affect how it looks, so that's an amazing little SPF to have in your handbag. Um, obviously not going to touch the brows. I might pop on a little bit of highlight. I'll use my Tom Ford Soleil Bloom. And there we have today's makeup look. Really happy with all those new in pieces. 
Um, I think we could potentially have some new favourites there. Right, Ta oh gosh, it is 8.43. I had better, I'm meant to be meeting Lucy at the Lavender Fields at 10. Um, and I have a new car <laughs> that we're gonna be driving, oh, I'm gonna be driving there. Um, as you, well, in fact, I'll talk to you about the car situation when I'm in the car. That would make more sense. Gosh, look at that perfect picture. So this is the car. Let me shut the door behind myself that I'm gonna be driving today, and this is the Audi e-tron. It is 100% electric, and as you know, Charlie and I are in the market for a new car, so we're doing lots of uh, lots of different trials with various vehicles to see which works for us the best. Do we want 100% electric? Do we want hybrid? Do we want 4x4? Do we want more of a sports model? This is obviously a little bit more sporty than the e-tron that we previously borrowed. Um, we had the previous, the 4x4, for about a week, whereas we got this one for three weeks, which will give us a really good time to try it out. I have to say, other than my Peugeot 206 when I first learned to drive, that was my first car, I've not driven a non 4x4 in quite some time, as so I'm hoping that I don't feel too tiny on the roads, especially the roads around here. But I have to say, gosh, these wheels are massive. Um, so I think this is probably gonna feel like a 4x4 drive, but I need to, um, I need to hit the road because I'm meeting Lucy in 30 minutes. So I'll give you a rundown on the car later. Oh, and just quickly, they have got the jazzy um, digital mirrors, which takes some getting used to, but they are seriously cool. Oh. Sorry, Dickens decided he was gonna try and join me. Right, engine on. That's it, of course it doesn't make any noise because it's electric. Um, no devices connected, please use NMI. Right, I don't know what that is. got a very jazzy reverse camera. One thing that also, as well as the lack of noise that you have to get used to with an electric, is that unlike um, non-electric cars, when you, so in non-electric cars, if you take your foot off the brake, you'll start to move, um, at least with most cars that I've ever driven. Whereas with electrics, it will only move if you put your uh, foot on the accelerator so you don't have that like slow glide as you lift your foot from the brake and that to me sometimes is a little bit scary because like if I'm reversing out of my driveway for example oh there's some doggies on the drive sorry I put the window up while I'm driving on the stones the stones are such a good um, security for us though because we can always hear when someone's coming up the drive um, yeah sometimes I'm just not ready to commit to the accelerator when I'm doing like oh shush <laughs> very sensitive sensors. I'm not ready to commit to the accelerator when I am just maneuvering on the drive and I just want to go really slowly. I just want to like ease off the brake, but I'm sure that's something that you just get used to. But um, yeah, people just don't hear you coming with electric. So you almost have to, um, you just have to drive. Oh, where am I even going? Gosh, let's get a sat nav set up. Well, that's good. Apple Maps just connected straight away. Uh, so we are going right. Oh, how many miles do I have? Um, 121 miles, fully electric. That's the great thing about these Audis. I mean, I'm not sure how they compare to Teslas because I've never driven a Tesla before. I think Teslas can do a bit more, but Audi, ooh, I keep going to look in my wing mirror and then realizing it's down there. Um, yeah, Audi electrics have a really good range on them. So this is not even fully charged and I've got over 120 miles to play with. And this one, the guy, when he dropped it off, was showing me that it's got uh, like a, um, an ultra charging point. So it can actually charge from empty 
sorry, to fully charged in 45 minutes if wherever you charge it has the right adapter. So that's amazing because we have potentially got a road trip down to um, West Sussex again, which I think is about 200 miles. Maybe that's maybe it's not quite that much, um, but it'll be amazing if we can charge it on route, like stop for a coffee, and in half an hour, which is the time that it would take us to like grab some breakfast probably, um, we can pretty much fully charge our car. I'm gonna stop chatting to you now because I don't even know if this <laughs> footage is gonna be usable, and I need to concentrate on driving. <laughs> just waiting to see if Lucy is here or not. Gosh, <laughs> this lighting is crazy. Um, there are lots of very beautifully dressed girls here with their gorgeous dresses and straw hats and picnic bags. So I think I'm not the only one here <laughs> coming to get a gorgeous snap. Ooh. <laughs> um, but to quickly rate my first drive in this car, oh my goodness, the power. It literally, you just like touch the accelerator and the g-force, I was thrown back. I forgot how powerful electric cars are and you literally feel like you're driving a spaceship it just whooshes you so quickly um and you don't have that like sound of the engine and i always feel like when i put my foot down in a petrol or diesel car it really feels like i'm really pushing the engine whereas this car just like elegantly zooms away um i also really like and i think this is quite common in newer cars that when you have any kind of um like if you're reversing or if you if your sensors are going off so it kind of knows that you're pulling to the side of the road to let a tractor go by for example the music automatically goes down which is really handy especially in slightly more tense situations on the lanes like that so yeah really good first drive in the car it's just amazingly quiet as well i can see people like looking around because they're shocked when i pull up next to them because they don't hear it coming which definitely takes some getting used to there's lucy so we're gonna head into the field um get some snaps and i'll show you just how gorgeous it is here by the way i think the lavender is getting cut on the 5th of august so um if you do want to come here which i would highly recommend it's near broadway near chipping camden as you will have seen from that beautiful drive um definitely worth a day trip for like all of those places and to come here you must make sure you come before the 5th of august because that's when they harvest it so yeah let's go this is a new addition from last year they've got a proper little pop-up here <laughs> with a cafe and all the lavender skincare very professional and then you can see there's a variety of slightly younger more kind of leggy lavender and then very voluminous plants over here let's go to the plumptious ones i say look how fat they are <laughs> It's amazing. So I think these little signs are telling us the different kinds of lavender. Folgate. Look at that. So the flying saucer hat is back. It always looks a little bit ridiculous when I actually wear it front on um, because when I'm taking pictures I like it to be quite like flat to the camera if that makes sense. So it looks better from behind unless I wear it properly. Um, this hat I got a couple of years ago but apparently um, they have got something very similar on Nazdigal so I will leave that link down below if I can find it. 
There's lots of little people having photo shoots here behind me and we found a very plumptious area. Lucy is over there ready to grab some snaps. <laughs> we found a good little spot, but we're just waiting for the sun to appear. successful shoot in the lavender fields I already published the reel that we shot there because it was just a really simple transition so let me know if you spotted that already on my Instagram if you're watching this video the day that it goes live it would have gone live yesterday so probably still the latest Instagram post I'm now absolutely ravenous so I'm gonna make the vegetable fried rice that I was meant to make on Monday evening before we had our A&E visit um, so I'm gonna show you just how easy it is so I've already cooked the rice just as per normal rice <laughs> um, cooking instructions and now in my lovely always pan and I'm using the gorgeous pink color today I'm going to be doing my veggies so I'm going to take out the simmering basket we don't need that for now I've wazzed up you wouldn't believe it but that is two cloves of garlic and I'm just going to quickly slice up some of the spring onions from the garden um, and lightly fry those in the base of here then I'm going to wash scrub um, what's the word shave peel <laughs> my very gnarly carrots from the garden then I'm going to put those in the thermomix in the blender as well and then I'm going to blend those up um, and add those into here my broad beans add the rice and then add an egg just to give it a little bit of an egg fried veggie rice kind of feel um, and hopefully it'll be rather scrummy. It smells pretty good to me. So here we have our veggie fried rice, uh, veggie egg fried rice. Normally I'd probably have this with some extra protein, but I think this will be nice and tasty for today's lunch. Well, it is now many hours later. Um, had our lovely lunch and then I ended up working outside in the sun for the rest of the afternoon and I started to edit this vlog which I know is approaching an hour long. Yes, I'm out of breath because I just came up the steps. Oh, I'm always out of breath when I come up to my dressing room. Um, yeah, the vlog is almost an hour long. Lunch was delicious. As you can see, I'm wearing my kind of sunbathing outfit. This is my strapless bra and I've got on some little bikini bottoms as well. So I am gonna wrap the vlog up here, darlings. We have some really exciting updates coming in the next vlog. It is, um, I'm gonna be showing you how the bathroom at Straw Top Cottage is currently looking because let's just say there was a huge 
transformation today and it looks so crazy but absolutely amazing so i can't wait to show you that um and yeah there's some really fun things going on over the next few days so i hope you're looking forward to the next vlogs um that's all from me for today it's been a long one so if you did get to the end please leave the word rice <laughs> Seeing as I just made a nice veggie rice for lunch, leave the word rice in your comments, darling, so I can see who got to the end. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Bye.